Hey guys, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and we are going to expand on our program design ideas. We're taking our ABC program and we are adding a D to it. There are many ways to do this. We're going to start talking about this by adding, considering D a sport with unregulated effort. You can also consider it a sport without unregulated effort, which makes it actually easier to do. Think about having our A program going twice a week, our B program going twice a week, and our C program going twice a week. Let's consider A as kettlebells, B as club, and C as mace. And then let's have our D B sport, unregulated effort. So let's consider A, B, and C to all be regulated output programs where we are starting with an idea and we are moving through a series of programs in order to accomplish goals. This is my favorite type of training because this is what we use when we say prep for movies. We have different types of programs that run on different days and they all have a heavy and light as well. And that allows you to push training for long periods of time with less down cycles in the training. I use this specifically for movie training because I'm not in control of that schedule. I have to fit this in wherever I'm allowed to fit it in. So this works out very well for a, a schedule that you are not in control of. Our kettlebell day would obviously be the high day for output and effort, the highest heart rate and the heaviest weights. Our club bell day would be our medium day, medium complexity, and medium heart rate demand. And our May stay would be our highest complexity with our lowest heart rate demand based on the amount of weight that you're using. A light kettlebell is still heavier than a heavy club. Our heavy mace is still way lighter than a light club. And that all has to do with the length of levers. But think about these ideas as being kind of a core group of ideas that I'm always coming back to. We're using kettlebells, clubs, and maces because they are the easiest to control for the least amount of equipment and the least amount of space demand that can be taken kind of generally anywhere in the world. You can transport these ideas. You could also replace kettlebells with barbells. You could replace a lot of these things with other things. These are the ones I choose. Our sport is unregulated effort. In the movie business, this tends to be stunt training. Stunt training is unregulated effort. It is entirely based on your choreographer or whoever's in charge of stunts and whoever's in charge of that stunt training. They tend to want to make this super hard because they want to make the day where you're actually filming it seem easy. Think about stunt training as being a martial arts class that's hyper-specific, but has a lot of different types of controlled outputs, direction, angle. There's a lot less variability and a lot more precision than you would be doing if you were actually trying to win a match. Stunt guys are trying to hide their face from the camera so they can double actors, and actors are trying to show their face to camera so that when they edit it together, it all looks good. Actors cannot do all of their own stunt work. There just isn't enough time in the schedule. That's why stunt guys exist, so second unit can run off and do things while main unit is doing the important parts, the parts where people actually talk and all that other good stuff. Main actors can't do all their own stunts because they have other things to do with main unit. Second unit is then the fill-in shots or the big wide shots or whatever. But think about this training as being unregulated effort. You have probably no control over where this unregulated effort goes in, and it could go in anywhere they have time for it. That's why we're running these programs, because some days you're gonna get this high effort, high effort, and some days you're gonna get this low effort, high effort, and it's going to balance itself out in some weird way. There are asymmetrical waves which take care of themselves. If you did have to do stunt days six days a week, then this would still work out fairly well. You would just reduce the amount of time that A actually takes down from like say a 30 minute workout to a 10 minute workout, but you would still do it. The same thing is true of our B workouts, you could lower the total amount of time of the workout in order to balance out the unregulated effort of D. And C is intentionally there to be an easy day 
that keeps you moving and helps you recover and gives you something that's less terrible to do. Training cannot be terrible every day. If it is, you burn out extremely, extremely quickly and you do not get what you want out of the program. This is kind of a Rick and Morty joke where at a certain point it stops being so much science and it becomes more art than science. And that's what we're kind of talking about once we get above AB programming, ABC program, and we start adding in D programming. And then when we add in D, E, and F programming, and then you can get all the way into G and it just keeps stacking up and stacking up. But think about these ideas as you can kind of get away with doing a ton of different types of programs if your main core set of athletic development and general physical preparedness programming is controlled and you only do each one of them twice a week they will balance themselves out or that's the idea it works a little bit less well if it's like barbelling replacing that and then like chest and shoulders and stuff replacing this other thing or med ball replacing club bell or something like that this idea kind of can break down pretty quickly if you tried to make abc all say crossfit workouts because they're all heavy all the time we're always trying to get our heavy medium and light days in there to self-balance programs like this it's a little bit more art than science at this point but if you understand the core idea you'll be able to develop your own programs and apply them to your own sports.